bing 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 Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we will be recreating the ice wall ability used by May in Overwatch. If you're interested in helping me out create more content, become a Patreon and gain access to these project files. We'll start with the ice wall model. This will be pretty quick as we only need a rectangle cut into small pieces with one blend shape. If you don't feel like modeling, there will be a link in the description down below to download an ice wall model for you to use. So let's delete the camera and light. Select your cube, go into edit mode and scale it up on the Z axis so that we can add more geometry to our ice wall. Ctrl R to add a few loop cuts around it. Switch to object mode and add the bases. Switch back to edit mode with the bases selected. Scale it down on the Z axis and make sure the very top is below the ground. In this case, the red line. Cool. Go back to object mode and add a new shape key. This will be the wall when it's raised. Switch to edit mode and scale up your model on the Z axis. Make sure the bottom faces are just below the red line and now you can add some imperfections to your mesh so that it looks more like ice. That's good enough. You can see if you change this value over here, the wall rises. That is exactly what we needed. I'm just going to left click and select shade smooth. Duplicate our ice wall and delete the bases first and then the shape key. With the duplicate selected, go to object, quick effects and select cell fracture. If this option does not show up, you need to go to preferences add-ons and enable the self-fracture add-on. So you can play around with these settings but honestly all you really need to change is the source limit. This is the amount of pieces that will be split into. I'm going with 5. Click OK and now you can see you got 5 new objects in your hierarchy. Well you don't need the duplicate anymore. Delete it and then select all fracture objects and lastly select our ice wall that contains the shape keys. Use Ctrl P to parent them. Cool, I'm just going to rename these real quick and disable them. Make sure the ice wall mesh is enabled and shape key value set to zero. Then export it as an FBX file. In Unity, I'm going to set up my test scene with a plane and a checker material. Before we import our ice wall, create a new material for it. Call it ice wall material for the sake of consistency. Import the model and drag our ice wall material into this box right here and under model settings make sure import blend shapes is checked as well as generate colliders. Click apply and drag our ice wall into the scene. First thing you will notice is the fact that it is currently raised, even though the blend shape value is set to zero. Well that is because if you zoom in you will see that these are the fragments of the ice wall and not the ice wall itself. Expand the ice wall game object and select all our fractures. Remove the mesh collider component from there and disable the game objects. Play around with the blend shape value and yep, it's working as intended now. Create a new C sharp script called ice wall script, drag it into our ice wall game object and let's begin coding. Okay, we don't need this part. Add system.link. And for variables, we will need a few floats health, duration, ray speed, destroy delay, destroy push force, destroy rot force, which stands for rotation. I will explain them in a minute. For private variables, we need a skin rush mender to access the blend shape, a mesh collider to bait the collider as the wall raises, a float that will be your blend shape value, and lastly, a boolean to control our wall raise loop. Under start, we assign our render and collider create a variable called ice walls. These walls will be a child of the center wall and when we create it, we will unparent them so that they act as their own little wall sections. All done with start. Under update, we check if the wall is not raised. And if it isn't, then we add a value to our blend shape variable and then using the render, assign this variable to the shape key. For collision, we create a new mesh bake it and then simply assign it to our collider. We need to stop this loop once the wall is raised though. Do a quick check to see if our blend shape variable is higher or equals to 100 
and set the boolean accordingly. All done with the wall animation. Now we need to do the death animation using our fracture meshes. First, we will check if our health is smaller or equals to zero, then we get all the children that contain a rigid body. For each child we find, we will unparent it and enable it, then destroy it using a delay so that we don't crowd our scene with fracture ice wall meshes. We have to give the rigid bodies some sort of motion, make them look a bit more alive, so we create a temporary variable that will hold the direction away from the ice wall, and then we use our destroy rotation force variable to create a random torque, and lastly give this torque as well as the force to the rigid body. Now we check if this is the last fracture mesh to remove the ice wall game object, and by the way, if this option does not show up for you, make sure you have system.link up here. Last thing we have to do in this script is lower the duration timer and set our health to zero whenever the duration timer reaches zero. Alright, open up your character controller script and let's add the function to use this spell in first person. My script is very simple, whenever I press left click I spawn a bullet. This bullet has a script that will access the ice wall and set its health to zero whenever it enters its trigger. If you've ever done a bullet script then this will look really familiar to you. Back in our character controller we will need to add a few new things. First two will be the key bindings to activate the ice wall and change its direction. A float that will be how far we can cast it. The preview game object as well as the prefab we will create. A layer mask so that we can avoid using it on things we don't want to and two booleans to control our key bindings. Scroll down to your update. Check if we have pressed the cast keybind, and if we have, we set the casting to be the opposite of casting, and then check if we are not casting to disable the preview wall. Now we do the same for our direction keybind. Check if we are casting and create a new function called casting wall. Add it in here, and that is it for update. Under our new function, we will need to use a raycast to move, rotate, and spawn the ice wall. You should have a reference to your camera transform here to get the forward direction of your camera. Inside this right cast, check if the ice wall preview game object is not active and if it isn't, we enable it. Create a temporary rotation and assign the Y value accordingly, depending on our direction boolean. Set the rotation and position of the ice wall preview using these values. Now we gotta create the ice wall. Check if we have pressed the left mouse and instantiate the ice wall game object at the ray cast hit point using the preview walls rotation. We disable casting since we just use the spell and then disable the preview as well. Um, actually, we're going to copy this line of code and add it inside our casting wall function so that we can only switch the direction while we are casting the wall. Back in Unity, I have my controller script bullet script and a bullet prefab. Also in the scene view I have set up my player controller. Expand the ice wall game object and select all our fractures. Give them a rigid body. For my bullet to work I need to change the name of my ice wall to ice wall clone. Let's set up some values now. Health to 1, duration to 5. This value has to be pretty high, I'll do 400 delay and push to 5, and lastly, the rotation to 50. Play around with these values until you find what suits you best. Under Mesh Collider settings, enable Convex and hit play. Ok, it's working alright. Let's add the adjacent walls. Duplicate our ice wall game object and move it to the side. I will disable the floor so that I can see them more clearly. Add as many walls as you want here on both sides. I have to rename them Ice Wall Clone for my bullet to work, and then grab all of them and drag them inside the center ice wall. Cool, almost there. Drag the Ice Wall game object into our project folder to create a new prefab and then make the ice wall on the scene a child of your player. This will be our preview. Select all the ice walls and remove their mesh collider as well as the ice wall script. Let's set the values for our player controller. For cast key I will use E and for direction I will use Q. 
range to something like 10 and drag or ice wall preview object into this box and the ice wall prefab into the down below. For layer mask, you select whatever your environment is on. In my case, this plane has a layer of default, so I will change it to ground and then assign it over here accordingly. Alright, if I press E, the preview shows up. Or not. Go back to the preview real quick and set the plane shape value to be higher than zero. Something like five so that it sits just above the ground. If it's too far, it disappears. Left mouse click and voila! It's all working as intended. I'm going to rotate some of the ice walls so that they look a bit different. Yeah, that looks better. Now go customize it with a better ice wall model. Give it some particle effects and add more functionality to it. This is what mine looks like. I hope this was useful for you. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I will do my best to answer them. If you are interested in more game development stuff, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.